And I want everyone to enjoy today, enjoy the summer, and we'll come back bigger, better, because we never stop. Well, uh, uh, it turns out that that wasn't a gimmick at all, John. The man meant exactly what he said on mm-hmm. Trophy Day. Celtic mean business, and we're not even, well, we've just begun the transfer window. That's the good news. The bad news is the fact that we've done all this business and all this news means that I need to see you over the summer. Mm. I was hoping I would get a break from you, but it's not to be. I think it's going to be a busy summer. Yeah, it's been a, it's been about a month since I've done a live show, um, a proper news one with an award show read a video with Jackie, but I've not been on the channel for a while. It's because there's been nothing much going on, Hamish, but suddenly over the last 24 hours, as soon as the transfer windows open, Celtic burst into life and there's a lot to talk about and a lot of it is a good thing. So happy to be here and happy to be back on the channel. How are you doing? I mean, obviously people mm-hmm. watch the channel to find out about Celtic, but, but I assume they, they like us as well to an extent. How, mm-hmm. how, how has it been over the last month on the website and, and just your general life? Yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying the summer. I'm enjoying the summer, enjoying the good weather until the last couple of days. It's become awful windy and a bit of rainy up here. But uh, mm. yeah, I'm all good. Enjoying, enjoying getting on. I've not had my summer break yet. That's still to come. So I'll have a couple of weeks off in, in, uh, in July, I think, and, and really relax and read a book or something. Hamish. Yeah, I know. It's exciting times. But I think you're right. I think it's going to be a busy month. Um, you know, that wee period, as you say, after after Trophy Day, was quite quiet. I think there was certainly a, the the calm after the storm, but I, I get the impression that that June. Well, we're already more than a third of the way into June, but I get the impression that the next three weeks of June are going to be very busy indeed. I think there's going to be a fair bit of business um, concluded by Celtic, and then obviously the players are going to be back. Uh, I think at the end of June, and certainly you know by early July, we'll, we'll start seeing footage of them. We'll be going away to to Europe. Uh, we'll have pre-season games to come. So it's all it's all heating up. Um, and I guess this is the kind of point where we start really looking forward to, to next season. Um, loads to chat about on this video, John. We've got Cameron Carter-Vickers signing for the club. We've got reports of Harry Cool coming in as a, a coach, I guess, in, in Angie's backroom team. We've got rumours of Argentinian left-back signing. We've obviously still got the Jota stuff to cover. Um, friendlies against teams that don't really like us too much. We've got new kits. There is loads to get through, but I think Cameron Carter Vickers is probably the place uh, where we mm-hmm. should start. Around half past six last night, almost out of the blue, I thought, in a, a funny way. I just mm-hmm. checked my phone and, and saw this CV patter from, from Celtic. It took me a wee minute to work out what it was. Um, obviously, it, it came quite quickly. And then right after that, they, they put the tweet out with the, the confirmation of the signing of Cameron Carter Vickers and a contract until the summer of 2026. And suffice to say, this is a pretty big statement of intent from Celtic, given that the transfer window only opened yesterday. Yeah, I, I do believe it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, the. Reports on the fee start at six million pounds, potentially rising to ten with add-ons, which would come over a period of years. I mean, add-ons are often a bit nebulous, so I would perhaps focus on the at least the the, the six million pound initial fee. That's what Celtic have paid at the moment, and um, which it seems is about the market for a centre back at that level these days. I mean, that's what we sent Christopher Julian for um, from from League One. Um, and I know Spurs weren't using Carter Vickers, but he did have an impressive season here. He was one of our players of the year. So they're always going to try and command a decent fee on the back of that, especially as a kind of English homegrown talent. And they always like to protect the value of players like that. Um, but it's a significant investment for the club, significant statement of intent. As you say, first day of the transfer window, bang, bring in a £6 million player, get the ball rolling. Um, and I think, you know, Carter Vickers will prove to be another, you know, shrewd investment from, from Celtic, I think. If you're speaking three or four years down the line, then I'm sure Celtic can make a profit on the player if he continues to perform at the level he has done in the first season. More importantly for me, I'm just, just getting someone he trusts in that defensive position, someone he trusts in that dressing room to build on what we saw last season. You know, if, if the manager wants it, then I, then I want it, basically. And the club haven't really quibbled with, with Spurs. It seems to have gone pretty smoothly. I know it's kind of dragged on for some people, but there's been holidays to consider. There's been people away. There's been breaks. There's been negotiations. All of these things are can take time. And so I think on the first day of the transfer window, to bring in a, a player of Carter Vickers quality for £6 million is, is a great start to the transfer window for Celtic. 
it's not dragged on nearly as, as much as it would have in the past. I mean, I was thinking mm-hmm. this earlier. Can you imagine this a couple of years ago? We, we would have been coming back to training without Carter Vickers. He would have been training with Spurs for weeks. The speculation would have gone on well into the, the pre-season. And I think it's really interesting that we've got the the defence from last season, the, the back four, the goalkeeper, all at the club now sorted long term. I know we're probably going to sign a left back, probably a centre back as well, possibly a goalkeeper. Oh. But but Ange has that you know back four for last season sorted. I mean, we're looking at at least six players on on top of CCV, and that includes Jota. So there's chat we're in talks with Benjamin Seagrace for the goalkeeping position. We know Th- Thoughts on that briefly. I mean, that's fine as a backup. I've got no issue with that. Yeah. I think Seagrace is a good keeper at, at this level. Better than Bain? I, I would suggest he was better than Bain. Yeah, I've never been particularly impressed with Bain. Um, but, you know, Seagrace, that goalkeeper, so we're, we're looking for a goalkeeper, even if it's not him, it doesn't end up being him. You know, and we've just moved on Barca, so it makes sense that the club would be looking for another keeper. I know there's chat um, about Oli Wayemi, but, it, you know, it's probably likely the case that he's going to be in the B team for another season at least. Um, and isn't right quite ready to be called up to the first team, so it makes sense to have another person in. Then you're looking at centre back. We're looking for another centre back beyond CCV. So, you know, that's another player, left back, defensive midfielder. Jota will be coming in as a winger, and I think you know the, there'll be room for another attacker too, another winger or another centre forward. So, mm. I think you're looking at least six signings beyond CCV, and I think that's why it's good to get the the business done so early, and that's why it's also good to see us moving on players like Barkas who don't really have a future in the range. Um, but as I've said on, on previous videos, Celtic aren't reckless, so they're not going to bulk up the squad with people who are in and high wages. So to, to move on a player like Barkas shows that the club are ready to, to bring players into. What's the thoughts on Carter Vickers, everyone? Let us know um, mm-hmm. any kind of thoughts on, on the sign. And I, I just think it's a really shrewd piece of business. I just think, it, I mean, there's never any guarantees with any signing, but it just feels to me as a, a really kind of sure signing um and that kind of sums up the way he plays as well just so so um so competent so secure the way he plays you know we've had so many defenders in the past center backs that i think have been good players but they've always been prone to an error boyata uh, Simunovic, even christopher julian you could say occasionally i think i mean can you remember carter vickers making a high profile error at all last season um, so I mean I think he's he's a great sign and ju- just quickly on on the quotes I mean Celtic posted mm-hmm. the the quotes on the article and a lot of it was pretty much what what you'd expect probably from a new sign and there were two bits that that jumped out to me he mentioned the spirit in the Celtic group as being a factor in the move as well as the prospect of playing Champions League football now that right there are, are two things we couldn't offer last season so I think right away mm-hmm. you see what Ange has brought to the club and how. I think it's fair to say Celtic are a far more enticing option than we were a year ago. And you look at what we did a year ago in the window. Yeah, I mean, I think it it, it seemed like last year that all of the players who did have options elsewhere were desperate to take it last summer. Whereas now it seems like the players... And, and the Carter Vickers did have other options. I'm sure he did have other options at a good level. You know, it's not like, you know, he's scrambling yeah. around for, for a club. You know, Celtic were one of a number of teams who wanted him. Um, so I think it says a lot that a player with options does want to be here, and I, I think it, I think the dressing room atmosphere and the atmosphere in general around the club right now is is part of that. I mean, when you're growing up and you're a, a young footballer and you want to make your uh, your mark in your career, you want to be playing football uh, somewhere that makes you happy on a day to day basis. You don't want to be a, a club with a a kind of a toxic atmosphere around that. And I think that that's. You know, over the last twelve months, there's been a real turnaround in that sense at Celtic, and it's no surprise we're seeing a player like Carter Vickers commit to us. Yeah, Ange describing it as a major acquisition as well, and I think it's hard to to disagree with that. Just to to finish on CCV um, mm-hmm. and, and tie it into something else. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> Am I biased here, or is, is this not one of the nicest Celtic kits we've had in years? It's an absolute belter. It's a nice kit, but if CCV looks like he's been forced to wear it here. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it's got Christmas morning jumper for yeah. your grand vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm not sure he, he he's maybe wanting to be where he is. But another interesting point, Carl Vickers, he made his first start for, for the United States overnight. Yep. First time in four years, I think. Played in a 5-0 win over Granada, I think. Uh, it's part of their kind of Nations League, their version of the Nations League. So that's another boost for him. 
um, beyond our way to up uh, is to to be really an international scene now and, and push for a place at this World Cup upcoming. I mean, if he start if he hits the ground running again at Celtic and he's playing Champions League football, you know, I think he'll be in that that World Cup squad, and that that's another dream scenario for for a player as you're growing up and wanting to make your mark in the game. As if I needed another excuse to support the States in the World Cup, given the group they're in. But we've we've got it with CCV. Hopefully, he plays a part in it. We're going to have quite a few players, aren't we, at the World Cup? Yeah. Croatia, Croatia are going to be a team we're up for. Japan are the obvious ones, aren't they? Given the probably three players we'll have in their squad. I, I like it, um, and I've actually enjoyed this international window. I don't know if it's yeah, because it's, it's not a, not a break from Celtic action, and it's just like the the football that is on by default. But I've also been enjoying the progress of some of the players. You know. While Abada scored his first goal for Israel, Matt O'Reilly's involved in the Danish under-21s. He was training with the, the senior Danish team. And and I think he could make a late push for this World Cup too. Um, GG's I, again, doing well for Greece. I know yeah, they're not Gigi's, in the World Cup. But. No, no, but they're kind of rebuilding at the moment under Gus yeah. Poye. And, and they're kind of, they've kind of made him... You know, part of part of their rebuild and we'll be building around him going forward. I think he's he's made two starts um over the, the international break. Um Anthony Ralston getting his first goal for Scotland, brilliant to see. The only the only downside was the injury to Carl Starfelt, and we'll just need to wait and see how that plays out. But it's been a pretty productive international window for, for a lot of these players um so far and it's good to see. It is indeed right. Carter Vickers, you can't really talk about Carter Vickers without mentioning Jota, so we just tackle this mm-hmm. briefly. Um I mean, the the really optimistic among us were hoping for a double announcement last night, but we'll get two good days out of it if they announce Jota in the next uh, the next week or so. We we don't really foresee any issues there, do we? It seems like all the the noise has been made are, are similar to the ones with CCV. Yeah, I think you know even a lot of people had assumed that the C, the, the Carter Vickers one might take a bit longer or might be a little bit more complicated than the Jota thing. I know there was a firm deadline. On, on the Carter Vickers one in the sense that it had, to, it had to be done by 15th of June or the 12th of June or something like that. So that's why it's all come to head now. I'm not sure if there's that that kind of date on the Jota thing, but I, I don't think there's any issues here. I think reporting in Scotland and Portugal suggests that the agreement with the, the between the clubs has already been made and it's just about you know sorting out Jota's contract and, and his wages and all that. And Again, it's compl- all these things are always complicated. It doesn't mean that he's not committed to Celtic. It's just the way it works out. So hopefully, I, mean, I would be delighted if that got done over the next week as well. Um, that would be another great start to this to this window. Yeah, what about uh, Alexandro Bernabe? Football Scotland <laughs> saying we are closing in on uh, his sign, an Argentinian left-back, 21 years old. He plays for Lanus uh, mm-hmm. in the Argentinian Primera División. Do you like that there? Mm. Um, recently linked with his teammate Julian Aude, uh, yep. but Football Scotland say that it's Bernabe that we're actually after. Um, don't know much about him. I watched I watched some clips on YouTube, and mm. he's quite small, um, but seems to be able to get his foot stuck in. He's uh, just typical kind of dynamic fullback, and um, without you know reading too much into a YouTube compilation, he looks a player. Yeah, but I mean, there's nothing much we can really add in terms of whether it'll be a good signing. But interesting that we have been linked with so many South Americans over the last few weeks. We're also linked with Francisco Ortega. Um, but yeah, that that those those Audi or, or however you pronounce it. You know, I'm not Derek Ray. Um, <laughs> the the Julian Audi links were interesting because Bernabe's name came up when I was looking into that because he's actually been playing ahead of Julian Audi more regularly for Lanas in, in Argentina. So that was always a it was a weird one. It was like, why would we be looking at the guy who's behind the other guy if mm-hmm. they're both available? So it seems that, you know, in Football Scotland, Mark Hendy can be quite reliable. So I'm interested to see. I was also interested in the the kind of nature of the report. It wasn't just like Celtic are interested in. It was, wasn't, it was more like Celtic could do this over the next week. Like Celtic are far down the road mm-hmm. on this and, and want this guy. So it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out. It's often interesting to note the language on these reports and what that actually means. But I think in this case, it pretty much suggested that Celtic could get this deal done quite shortly. So that, that's an interesting one to, to consider. A, pe- a few people pointing out that he's apparently very good in FIFA. Um, I've seen quite a few people saying that. It's, it's just an exciting signing, isn't it, if, if it does happen? I mean, he, we don't know much about him really, but I mean, signing an Argentinian fullback... 
is just incredibly exciting. Um, yeah. I, I think that's just the whole thing about this at the moment. It's just so exciting, you know, Celt- following Celtic. I think he's made one appearance for the Argentina under-23s, but I was looking through the Getty images yesterday when I was doing an article on him, and there's like one photo of him in an Argentina top. And as soon as you see a player in an Argentina top, you're just like, yeah, he looks like a player. <laughs> um, so I, it would be exciting to sign the South American. I think the fans would get behind that. I mean, it's not often we sign players from Argentina and Brazil, and I know it hasn't always worked out for us in the past, but, mm. you know, hope springs eternal, especially in the ranch. And I think we do need a player for that position. You know, we do need a left back. We need competition for Greg Taylor. And um, we're moving Liam Scales onto Aberdeen by all accounts, or or at least moving him on if the Aberdeen thing falls through. So we need a player in there to compete and really push Greg Taylor on, or perhaps even take his place in the team. So there's going to be plenty of games next season and it'd be good to, to have someone else in there. But the good thing is these players now that we're signing from, from far-flung places aren't coming in with the same pressure on them to immediately perform like we had a year ago. We were signing players like Kyogo from the other side of the world and effectively thrusting him in a couple of days after he'd arrived. We, we've got that, and especially with no major qualifiers as well this year, you, you do feel as if there's more of an option for Celtic to ease these players in. Now, if they're good enough to come in and start straight away, I, I doubt Ange will hold them back at all. He's not that kind of manager. But it just means that if we are signing these kind of players, there's not that same pressure on them to perform straight away. And that goes for, it goes for the whole squad, to be honest. Like, it does feel as if the pressure is slightly alleviated this summer because we don't have these massive qualifiers to play. Yes, the league season's still going to be important. We need to start that off well. I personally think we've got a massive opportunity in the first few months of next season with the other top teams having qualifiers, with us having Rangers, and I think Hearts at Celtic Park straight away. Um, We have a massive opportunity to to really start the league season well, Um, but it just feels as if we're in a... last. Obviously, last year was an anomaly, but even in... Oh, I've lost John. There we go. John's back. John, I was uh, midway through a brilliant, brilliant speech there and you ditched me. I'm really disappointed, mate. That was your way of telling me I was talking absolute crap, wasn't it? No, I don't know. I pressed the wrong button there. (laughs) To be honest, that was all me. That wasn't even my internet connection. That was purely me. And clicking on something that was stupid to click on. Sorry. Okay, well, I've taken the hint anyway. Let's move on and chat about Harry Kuehl. Um, He's set to join Celtic as a member of Ange's backroom team. Sky Sports reporting this. Kuehl last seen managing Barnet last season. Um, you read into this. What have you? Mm. What have you thought of it? What have you made of it? Well, I don't. Do you remember him as a player, Hamish? I remember him as a player. Oh, come on, I'm not twelve years old. Well, sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. I've just. I mean, he was a great player in his day. I mean, I love watching him for. He sent a back, wasn't he? <laughs> no, no. But in all seriousness, that I love watching him for for Leeds and Liverpool, and um, it's always exciting when it's kind of like a big name comes. Mm. I think that adds a bit to it. I think it's worth noting that Ange often works with young Australian coaches and jobs. You know, previously this isn't unique to Celtic. I don't think it particularly comes out of left field in the sense of, like, Ange, I think he worked with John Hutchinson in in Japan Mm -hmm. and other Australian coaches in Japan. Like, he often takes someone under his wing and kind of guides them. But I don't don't think Ange ever does it for sentimental reasons. He'll be thinking that Mm. that Kyo can add something to this group and add influence to this group. Um, And he's essentially the greatest Australian player of all time. I think he was actually voted that. Uh, about mm-hmm. a decade ago, nominated for the Ballon d'Or once. I mean, that's how good he was at one point. Um, he won the Champions League with Liverpool. I think he started that final, had to go off injured. Um, so he's been at the highest level and been around the highest level. And I think having someone with that um, air and reputation about them is a good move. I know it hasn't particularly worked out for him as, as a manager, but that doesn't mean that he's not a good coach and that doesn't mean that he can't have influence. I mean, I see this as a kind of almost like a Damien Duff type thing. And, and I thought yeah. he... That was he, the first thing I thought of when I saw it. And he was um, he was very popular with the Celtic support, first and foremost. It created a good feeling around the coaching staff. Um, and I think he was influential on the players at the time. All the players spoke very highly, Damon Duff. So I think having someone of that ilk come in isn't a bad thing. I've watched a few interviews with him um, over the last 24 hours, and he seems like a fiery character. He seems like the kind of guy that would be and just type of person like he doesn't hold back he speaks the truth he speaks honestly he's outspoken um, and again I don't think that's a bad thing either to kind of shake things up at Lennox Town heading into a new season either so I'm quite excited about it um, to be honest with you a big name um, can't do any harm and I think I think there's only upside to this I don't think there's any downside he's not going to come in and wreck the show 
Um, so I, I'm pretty positive about it all. And he'll be hungry, surely, to to come <laughs> in because it's a it's a massive opportunity for him to to come in and to to work under Ange. I mean, I I dare say like most Aussies, Harry Kew will will love Ange, uh, and it's the feeling's probably mutual, to be honest. Well, it is so it's an opportunity for both. Ange was in his Ange Q and A on on Twitter. Ange was asked the one player he would bring to Celtic to bring as a player, mm. and he said Harry Kew. So. Ange is a big fan. Ange knows all about him. They, they, they know each other. I've spoken before. I mean, he did an interview when he was manager of Barnett on Sky Sports News. I remember it and spoke about Ange joining Celtic. So they're well aware of each other and I think this is a good step. And slagged off the 12-month rolling contract, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. So he's not perfect, but um, yeah, uh, hopefully comes in soon. And I think it just it just continues that that feeling we've got at the club at the moment of, of everything improving. You know, we're trying to improve ourselves every day. Because I was thinking, you know, we won the league last season and, and I think for some Celtic managers that would almost be the pinnacle, winning the league. That's what you're judged on, that's what you'll be remembered for. And we're just taking it for granted that Ange is going to, you know, strengthen Celtic and take us forward but because of the man Ange is and, and, you know, what a leader he is and the way he thinks. But I think we would have had managers in the past that would almost have, have gone into kind of consolidation mode having won the league and almost be worried about the other teams and catching us and just trying to keep players whereas Ange is just going to try and you know take us to this, this next level and to me at the moment what we're feeling at the moment it's almost like the start of something at Celtic it's not like a, just a continuation on really it feels as if you know last season we won the league but now it properly starts do you get that feeling at all from what you're saying? Kind of yeah but it's kind of it's hard to kind of justify it in those terms because I really enjoyed last season, really yeah. enjoyed the success of last season and it felt like its own little self-contained mm. journey in a way and it, it did feel like the kind of winning the league did feel like an end point at the time and we all celebrated it as such but I don't think Ange has ever thought of that and, and I think perhaps over the next six weeks or so I think Celtic fans will get their head around the idea that it's again just the start of another journey. This is Ange wants to do something in Europe. I know it seems far-fetched and I know it seems... Um, unlikely that they were going to be that competitive in the Champions League group stages because some of the teams we can come up against are the proper elite of Europe and we're just not in that ballpark in terms of um, resources or players and that's just a fact but I used, you've got to believe, you've got to have hope like I didn't really, this time last year I don't think I really believed Ange would have us in this position now, yeah. um, so you've got to have a little bit of hope, you've got to just kind of give yourself to a little bit I mean, as supporters, we can sometimes be a little bit too analytical about things. You know, we can quibble about the fee we're paying for Carter Vickers. We can quibble about, you know, the who we're signing in here and, and what this player does and do we need an improvement on Greg Taylor. And I think we should just learn to enjoy it a little bit more and kind of just give ourselves over to this, whatever this ride is going to be. Because I think it's going to be another up and down season. I don't think it's going to go all our way over the next 12 months. Um, I think it's going to be incredibly exciting along the way um, and that's what I'm preparing myself for. I mean Celtic aren't going to win the Champions League under Ange but that, no. that's not the only level you know, of success that we can achieve. I mean you look at the teams who reached the, the latter stages of the Champions League last season and there, there were some smaller teams that I personally think Celtic can compete with. The likes of uh, Benfica and Ajax and even Villarreal who made the semis. Um, now I'm not saying we're making the semis of the Champions League anytime soon, but then you look down at the Europa League and you know the 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 four teams that made the semi finals there. I think are again are teams that Celtic can compete with. And you know when you see the two teams that were in the final last year, you know incredible runs from from both of them. That's something that 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 Celtic can as aspire to, and I think Ange can certainly do that. And then obviously you've even got the Conference League as well, and we're not going to be in that at all next season. We already know that, but you never know in in, in years to come. Um, you know, as that a tournament we could we could go and win. So there are opportunities in Europe that are away from just winning the the Champions League, and and obviously the group stages, the Champions League is is what we need to you know, focus ourselves on first and it will depend on the, the group we get. I think there's a, probably a fair chance we end up with a couple of big hitters and the way these groups work, you're almost kind of writing off last 16 qualification or certainly fans are because it will be incredibly hard. But third place, I think, is is going to be mm -hmm. what Celtic are going for and, and just being back in the Champions League, having these glamorous nights and, and, and nicking a Europa League spot and then hopefully going on some sort of a run in that in the new year. I mean, I think that's a pretty good blueprint for a season and I also think it's achievable I, I genuinely do I, I know that's daft when 
with some of the results we had in Europe last year. But I think we also had good results in Europe last year. Mm. And we had performances that deserved more in Europe last year. The, the Bayer Leverkusen games spring to mind. Real Betis away from home. You know, this is a was a decent Celtic last year in, in the group stage of the Europa League. And I think if we bring that level, we sign some players and we improve defensively, I think, at moments in these games. You know, I, I think that, that blueprint that I've just, just kind of uh, put forward is, is doable. I, I totally agree. And I think... I think if you look at it, I mean, there's a lot of being said about Celtic in Europe last season and a lot of untruths being aired about what it, what it was and what it meant. I think if you look at the Europa League group stage in isolation, I think nine points is a decent return from that group yeah. that we were in. And I didn't really have an, an issue with the points total and we just didn't qualify and, and I was unfortunate and, and that was that. Um, I do think we could have done better against Bodo Glimt. Yeah. And that was a big disappointment and Celtic need to perform at a higher level if we're going to do anything in this upcoming group. But the team know that too and I think the team will have improved by the point that we're playing these European games from that from that point against Bodo Glimt as well. Um, not just in terms of the players that we're bringing into the club, but just the players that are already here. And I do think, as you said, a third place finish is, is realistic in this group. I think if we're looking at it and competing with the pot three team and thinking... That's almost the home and away kind of situation with, with mm. that pot three team. Um, I, I think that there's a good chance that we get that third place and go back into the Europa League. At the same time, why not dream about something bigger? You know, we can we can dream about Celtic Park being this big fortress again, and at least that hope will be alive at the start of the, the campaign. And, and that's exactly what we want. We want to be on this big occasion. And I don't think Ange and the players are going to shirk from from a challenge, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm just trying to find the, the wee graphic I did for the, the pot three teams. I just wanted to have a, a brief look um at the you know the, the, the teams because there I mean there's there's teams there I kind of likened it to the Europa League top spot uh, top pot in terms of the calibre of teams. I mean they're good sides mm-hmm. in there, but you know, obviously we only know seven of the eight at the moment. I think it's a fair chance it's maybe Benfica are gonna be the last one, but there yeah. are teams there that Celtic can compete with and there's also teams there in, in pot one especially you know, Porto, Frankfurt, um, Ajax, good teams, but teams, again, that, you, that Celtic could compete with if they're drawn with us in a group. So there's a fair chance that, although we'll probably get maybe one or two big hitters, that there's a there's a chance for us to, to compete in that group. We got um, one in from Mazar there a minute ago. I think the, the gist of it was asking us who the dream team you wanted in the group. Um, yeah, who, who are the guys most excited to potentially play at Celtic Park? You got any thoughts, John? I would love to play Real Madrid. Um, I know it's. Yeah. I know it's not a. I know it's not an easy game. <laughs> I would love to have the European champions visit Celtic Park. I just think that would be magic. I mean, if you're if you're going pot one, you could quibble and, and go. You know, I want an Ajax or a Frankfurt. But realistically, put your want your top one to be the big glamour team, and I think if not, you know, a Real Madrid game would be fantastic at Celtic Park. And I think that would be a good trip abroad for supporters too. Again, in, in pot two, you're looking for perhaps, you know, not your Liverpool or your Chelsea or your Barcelona. You're maybe one That's the worry you've got if you get Real Madrid that you, yeah, you yeah, could yeah. then get, a, whereas if you do get a team like Porto or someone, then you're probably not going to get two big ones. And then in the pot three, I always, I mean, I never mind a Portuguese and Italian team for some reason. I always think Celtic are pretty competitive against those tiny teams. So perhaps a Napoli or a, or a sport in Lisbon would, would do there. But it's it's going to be so difficult regardless, you know. And there's no easy games there. I'm not trying to say we're going to bat our sport in Lisbon, but um, um, they would certainly be easy on some of the other teams in that pot. Frankfurt for me. Um, moving mm. on, pre-season <laughs> fixtures. Um, <laughs> these are the four we know about at this stage. Uh, Bannock Ostrava. This was announced yesterday, I believe, July the thirteenth. That's uh, midweek, as is the third one against Legia. The two against the English sides, both at Celtic Park. Our weekend games. Um, Legia one's interesting. I remember our last meeting with Legia really well when we overturned that um, deficit from the first leg. A 3-0 victory, of course, at Murrayfield. Georgia Samaras hat-trick. That was a, a great night. Let football win and all of that kind of stuff. That should be interesting. The Arthur Boric tribute match. Josip Juranovic, of course, going back. Um, should be I good. think that's caught the imagination of people in Poland too. We've already been, there's people being reaching out from Polish media looking for us to talk about the rivalry between Celtic and Luigi. I don't think, I'm not sure that rivalry is a real one. I mean, I think on their part, you know, that was a horrendous moment for them. But I think on our 
side of things. It was just par, wasn't it? It was all just a bit of a laugh. I mean, I don't, I don't think we particularly deserve to go through that tie. You know, I don't think we were. And uh, but that whole let football win stuff was was just a laugh to me. I didn't feel offended by it. So I think it should be about Boric at the end of the day. Anyway, I mean, he was a fantastic keeper. He's one of my favourite players. Um, he so me. there he is behind you, the holy yeah, goalie legend. himself. Um, he is a bit of a legend. He was a bit of an icon at the time. He was so good in Europe. He always seemed to raise his game in Europe. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I'm excited that Celtic are part of his big goodbye. You know, so happy about that. Yeah, um, I think we'll leave it there then, John. I think that's kind of all we've, we've covered for today, unless you've got... Oh, no, you've got... We have got one more thing I've just remembered. You wanted to chat about um, more staff mm-hmm. additions, yeah. didn't you? In fact, I wanted to play, um, just so I remembered there, because you would have been fizzing if I'd ended the video there without you getting your moment. Um, you spoke to Ange uh, in April, I believe, just prior to the Ross County game, and mm-hmm. you, you wanted to put this question to him. So we'll play this and then we'll we'll chat a wee bit about what's happened. There was an interesting report earlier this week about the positive impact of Anton McElhone on, on the sports science department at Celtic this season. I just wanted to get your thoughts on maybe the, the progress that's been made on that front. And if you're, you know, if there's any other staff additions in the pipeline this summer that might help make Celtic take the next steps. Yeah, look, we're always uh, looking to improve areas, obviously. Um, yeah, my main focus when I, when I sort of got the position at the beginning of the year was, yeah, the team ran into rebuilding and, and my focus is pretty much on, on, you know, making sure that we we had a side that was competitive this year um, because, you know, I've said on countless occasions that after a trophyless season last year, we had to have success this year. Um, it's just, the, just how I felt. So m- my total focus was on getting a, a team and, 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 and sort of a, an environment where it give us a chance for success anyway. Um, but within that, you know, I feel that there are areas we can continually look to improve the club. Uh, Sports science was one area uh, <clears throat> where we bulked up. Uh, player welfare was another area where we brought people in to to help players both on and off the field. Um, all these things are there to to make us a better club. And you know, in this off season, there'll be other areas that you know now I have the time and and I guess um, <clears throat> the understanding of of how things are working where we can make these improvements. And yeah, I think there are still areas where um, you know we can we can be better and and um, the club has been really supportive. I, I tend to be fairly, you know, meticulous and, 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 and probably in some respects, people think, you know, or feel maybe I should um, move a bit quicker, but I just like to get things right. So I'm, I'm not, I haven't rushed these decisions. I haven't just brought people in for the sake of it. I'll, I'll bring the people in that I believe can add to what's already a, a really you know, strong group of staff that support the players. And um, and we'll do that over the coming months. And, and Michael and, and and the board have been really supportive about that. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're leaving it to me and making sure that whatever I've asked for so far, I've received. And, um, you know, I think, um, I, I think that'll continue. So exciting times and more staff additions to come. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the whole point is that Ange kind of sticks to his word. I mean, shortly after that, Mark Lowell arrived as the head of recruitment um, and we've been linked with Harry Keo, as, as we know, and he's coming in as a first-team coach. Um, we don't know if that's kind of a, as a replacement for the likes of a Kennedy or a, a Strack at this point. I know both have been linked with managerial roles over the last couple of years, so I wouldn't be particularly massively surprised. But it just shows Ange is kind of shaping what he wants the, the football department to be at Celtic. And Recently, Celtic have added other um, job opportunities online um, on the Jobs and Football website, advertising for positions. One of them was a, a first-team analyst um, working closely with the analysis and the, the coaching staff to kind of help prepare players for, for matches ahead. The, the job description on that was, um, this may include but not be restricted to pre-match opposition analysis, set play analysis, individual technical analysis, ad hoc research projects and some data trend analysis is essential to have a sufficient mix of academic football and specific training experience and knowledge to carry out this role. So they're kind of beefing up the, the, the analytical department. And again, just this weekend, another job popped up um, to the um, to that Jobs in Football website to for someone reporting directly to the head of sports sign, Atom McElhone, um, as a 
um, sports scientists focused on recondition, uh, football conditioning and reconditioning monitoring and internal external external training loads through collection analysis and dissemination of information to aid in the planning and periodization of training working in alignment with the medical team to create efficient and effective return to place that strategies working in collaboration with the coaching department to create bespoke individual plans that are position specific and tailored to the playing philosophy and um, so it feels like Celtic are rounding out their staff options at Lennox Town probably won't be the only changes over the summer I think it's just good that, that um, Ange is getting on with the business of of putting this together and being true to his word that what he told me in April that now that he had a bit of time he wanted to make you know specific changes to areas that he thinks can benefit after 12 months in the job and there's been a lot of chat about Ange and his staff and his backroom staff and the people at Lennox Town over the last 12 months but I think it's clear that Ange has pretty much autonomy in what he wants to do yeah. here um, and that's what should be pleasing as well so um, I'm quite excited about the future and excited that what Ange says gets done. Yeah, he's just at the centre of everything at the moment, isn't he? He's making virtually every decision. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in charge of ticket prices next year, the way it's going. Um, certainly well, player might, recruitment, but I think he loves that. He might be in charge of 6-7 Hill Hill. Um, people... <laughs> oh, we're both getting sacked then. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would be true. That would be true. Yeah. Interesting, right? I think that is us now, unless there's anything else. No, I think that's everything that I wanted to say. Excellent. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. We just thought we'd bring you this uh, video today. Um, we may do another couple of lives uh, over the next few weeks until Celtic are properly back. But I think um, I think we're all very excited about what's to come. Carter Vickers has joined. He's part of us for next season. Hopefully Jota is going to join him very soon as well as a, a host of uh, other new signings, possibly as many as five or six um, with the reports we're getting at the moment. Exciting times, uh, exciting times for the channel as well. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Um, oh, this is about when I was going to do the, the Ange outro and I completely forgot what he said. It was going to be, enjoy your weekend, we'll come back bigger, better next week, but I completely messed that up. Yeah, you, you can tell we've not done one of these for a while. No, I actually do feel rusty. I feel really <laughs> rusty putting the graphics up and it's only been about a fortnight. Um, so we, that's maybe more reason to do another one of these very soon. But yeah, we'll be back bigger, better next week um, because we never stop. <laughs>